Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem array wrapper. We are creating a class array wrapper, even though they made it a function. And basically the premise of the problem is that we want to overload a couple operators for this class. And it's easier to understand when you take a look at the example. So here you can see that we're creating two instances of the array wrapper class, passing in an array of numbers each time. That's always going to be the input for this class. That's why it's called array wrapper and I guess we're guaranteed that it's going to be numbers as well like that's the type of this array what's happening is kind of interesting here if you've never seen this before we're literally taking the plus operation between these two objects and somehow we're getting a number as the result so that's pretty weird if you've never seen it before but this is actually pretty common in other languages like C++ which is the first language I learned I think you can also do it in Python but I'm not super familiar with doing this type of stuff in Python but one one language you definitely can't do it in is Java because Java is a pretty rigid language. It doesn't give you that flexibility, but C++ probably gives you too much flexibility, at least for certain cases. In this case, we're not technically overloading the plus operation. We're not giving it a different meaning. What we're actually doing is overloading the value of method on this object, and we're doing that by adding to the prototype. So what JavaScript is going to do before executing this statement, it's going to get the value of this and the value of that and then add them together. Now, normally for just a regular number like five plus five, the value is the same thing itself. And I think it's probably similar when you're dealing with strings as well. So what we really want to do is for this array, convert it into a single number within this function. And in our case, they told us in the problem description that this number should evaluate to the sum of this array. This number should evaluate to the sum of this array. So that itself is pretty simple. Before I get into the second thing that we wanna implement, cause it's completely different, let's actually finish implementing this portion. So in our class, the first thing we want to do is given that array of numbers, just set it to a member variable and we can do that like this this. So that's what's making this a class, even though it's a function. That's why we can call the new keyword here that will initialize this. I would much prefer though to write this with class syntax because I think it makes it more obvious, but oh well. And now to get the value of that array, remember we do have access to this dot nums within this method, even though this is not directly defined inside of the array wrapper. And for that particular array of numbers, we wanna get the sum. Now you can't just call like a math function like sum, that would be too easy. JavaScript gives us a ton of flexibility, but I guess it doesn't wanna give us like a utility function like that so the easiest way to probably get the sum of this array is by calling reduce on it if you remember how that works it's a good a chance to review that when you call reduce we pass in two things we pass in a function a callback so I'm just gonna define like an anonymous function here and the second parameter is the accumulator in our case we want to accumulate the sum of these numbers and the initial value for the accumulator can be set to zero. So that's the second parameter here. Now for our function itself, one of the parameters is going to be a number from this array. I'm going to call it n. And the second parameter is going to be the accumulator, which yes, the initial value is zero, but I'm going to call it a for short. And what we want to return after iterating through each number is basically the sum of that number plus the accumulator so far. So this will pretty much get the entire sum of these numbers store it in the accumulator and it will also return that from the reduce method so we can go ahead and just return at this point and that will be the sum and so now when we try to execute this line of code down here it will work as expected but the next part is going to be a bit more interesting well I would actually say it's a bit more straightforward when you convert a string to an object, we can also overload that method as well. I think this actually is available in Java. So this will not be super complicated. What they told us though we want to do is for that array, we wanna print it in this format. You might think, well, then from here, can we literally just say convert string for this number array and then return that? Well, we can't because when you convert an array like this to a string, we actually get one, two. We get that without the outer brackets. So what we want to do to this is just add the brackets on the outside. And the easiest way to do that is using backticks. Or you could also add a character at the beginning and a character at the end, but I'm just going to use backticks. So we'll have an open bracket. We want to say this string nums is not a string. 
thing, it's actually a variable. So we can do that with a dollar sign curly braces and then close this off with the closing bracket. So it's really as simple as that. Now we could also take these two strings and concatenate them together, but that's obviously not a part of the problem. But you can imagine how overloading these types of operators could be helpful. But to be honest, most of the time you probably don't want to do this because it can get kind of complex. Now let's run the code to make sure that it can work. Of course, there's a bug. We don't have a reference to nums. We need to use our current context, which is using the this keyword. So now hopefully this works. Now, as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.